All right, this is a Computer Programming University, and let's get right into it. First thing, let's create our first Python script right away. So here I am in my Ubuntu installation. We're just going to go ahead and say VIM, hello world, hello world. How have you been? Where have you been? VIM means VI improved. It's basically a text editor that comes for free with Ubuntu. I recommend it. Let's create our first script. I'm going to press I for insert, and then we're going to type print. Hello. <laughs> Not so many W's. Uh, L's. Hello, world. What am I doing? Hello, world. All right, that's it. Escape, and then we do colon, and then W for write, Q for quit. And there we go. So let's go ahead and type in hello, world. And let's see what happens. Hello, world.py for Python. And nothing happens. Whenever you type something into the command line, basically what's going to happen is the system is going to search for whatever you typed in. It's like, what is this? What have you typed in? Hello, world.py. What does that mean? There's certain directories it's going to look and see if it finds it as far as a command. For example, your user bin folder, for example. Now you can add separate directories to where it searches. Go to my YouTube channel. I have a video that shows you how to set the path variable so you can set it temporarily using the export command and permanently using etc environments and other means depending on which environment you're running in but first of all you have to make sure that your script is in a path that your system searches for otherwise it doesn't know what you're what you're doing now a workaround is if i type in python which is going to call the python interpreter and then i type in the name of the script so hello world Dot .py now I'm actually calling the python interpreter and I'm telling it to run the script however this is going to give you a syntax error because if we go back to our script you can store it in, in a, just a regular spreadsheet right you can have your heading so you can say This is the CPU channel. Let me clean this up and let's go back to our script here. Look what we did. We just did print space hello, space world. The Python interpreter doesn't know what the hell is going on. When you want to use print, when you want to specify a string, it's best to enclose that string in parentheses like this. So now if we go ahead and save this and we try to run it now, what do you know? It prints out hello world and that's it you've now created your first python script it is that easy now for those of you running python 3 you're gonna have to do something a little bit different what you're gonna want to do is you're gonna want to put this into your parentheses like that and that will work it should be backwards compatible as you can see it still works so again Python 3 include the parentheses. If you're using um, Python 2.7 or an older Python, you can just put it in quotes. And also you can, let's delete this with the X key and let's hit R to replace and single quote and R to replace and single quote and X to delete. And there you go, let's save that and try to run it now. And what do you know, it works. So single quotes, double quotes, Whatever floats your boat. Ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, bum, bum. This is the Computer Programming University, and I have just shown you how to create your first Python script. Congratulations! You are now a programmer. Go tell your mother. Okay, so one thing to note is let's insert and go to the top here. When you put your script into a path where the system is going to look and you type in the command, the system is going to look at what you have. So look at the script. It doesn't know what interpreter to use, whether it's uh, corn shell or seashell or Perl or Python. How is it going to know? The way you know is shopping. Sounds like a magician's thing, but look at you. You're enjoying this video, aren't you? Well, I just did this video to kind of get feedback from you guys. If you guys like the way things are going so far, give this video a like. If I can get up to 50 likes, I'm going to do a complete Python training series. But I have to know that you guys are interested and also that you like my style. So if you like my style, you think this is cool, you're having a great time learning, which is the whole point, give it a like. Let's get it up to 50 and I'll do the full series. And in general, if you don't like it, give me feedback below regardless. 
I want to produce the most awesome Python training series ever. And to do that, I'm going to rely on you guys and your feedback. 50 likes, and I'll do a full series. Otherwise, let me know why this video sucks. Seriously, guys, I'm very passionate about your success. I am the product of two teachers, so teaching is in my blood. I love sharing knowledge, and I love getting the emails from you guys about how you got this great job and how much of an impact I've had on your success. That's what it's all about, helping out and giving back. And if you appreciate and respect that, go ahead and give the video a like and show some support and I will respond to your feedback. If you guys tell me this is awesome, I will do a full series. If you tell me it's not awesome, I'm gonna listen to why it's not and adjust. This is Shebang. Shebang is hashtag cool story, bro. No hashtag exclamation mark and then user bin and then you can do ENV and then Python. So. What this is, what the shebang is all about is basically whenever you type in the, the name of your script and it's in a path, so it's located, system searches, finds a script that matches what you type in. Okay, this is a script. Now, how do I interpret it? First line it's gonna look at, oh, user bin environment Python. Oh, you want me to use the Python interpreter? Okay, no problem. And you're telling me where the Python interpreters? Perfect. So I'm gonna go to this location, find the Python interpreter, and then say, hey, Python interpreter, there's a script I want you to take a look at. And while you're at it, you might as well run it. So that's what's gonna happen. It's gonna call the Python interpreter. Python interpreter is going to read your script and interpret it. That's what it's supposed to do. So very important, put the shebang, first line of your Python script. So when you type in the Python script, your system knows which interpreter to use to actually run your Python script. Otherwise, you're gonna to have to type in Python space script name every time because otherwise the system doesn't know what interpreter to use. Very, very simple. Did I just say doo-doo? Don't you just love YouTube comments? Well, let's talk about comments. Comments in the context, of course, of Python. So what if you wanna write a comment and you should write a lot of comments? I'm gonna repeat myself. Please do include lots of comments in your code for the purpose of other people being able to understand whatever madness it is that you've written. And also for your own self, right? Programming, you know, once you get better at it, and you will, it's about you guys achieving that goal. I'm passionate about you guys being successful. You're gonna watch these videos. You're gonna buy the book in the description. You're gonna take the course in the description. Those of you guys that have the money, when you get more advanced scripts, Sometimes it can be to the point where your own code you may not understand. You write a code right now and you understand it very well now, even three weeks later, and you're like, why did I do this? Comments, include as many comments as possible to your code. That is very, very good programming practice. Please adopt it now from the very beginning, right? So. Let's comment, and don't you love YouTube comments, people on your videos talking about all kinds of nonsense. So if you wanna comment, you can do single line or multi-line comment. Single line comment, hashtag cool story, bro. Cool, oh man, cool story, bro. Anyway, literally, that's how you do a comment. You do a hashtag and you can type whatever you want. You can say blah, 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 blah and there's a comment. And I have a call on my phone that says, potential spam, gotta love. This is the Samsung Galaxy S8. By the way, I'm doing a full review of this. If you wanna get this awesome smartphone, link in the description. I'm not gonna answer the spam call. Anyway, so yeah, you can write a comment just like that, type whatever you want. But what if you wanna do a multi-line comment? Very easy to do. What you're gonna do is brr, comment, brr. Okay, semi-automatic, what am I talking about? Single, single quote, single quote, single quote. Line one, this is cool. Line two, this is really cool. Line three, whatever the hell you wanna type. And then when you're done, single quote, single quote, single quote, that's all it is. Single quote, single quote, single quote. Line one, blah, blah, blah. Line two, blah, blah, blah. Line three, blah, blah, blah. And then when you're done, three single quotes, that's it. So there you have your multi-line comment. Single line comment, again, is just a simple single hashtag and you can type whatever the hell you want to type. It is that easy, bro. The road is long.
but he's not heavy. He's my brother. Sorry about that. Uh, my internet connection's having some issues. Okay, so a couple more notes, a couple <laughs> additional notes. Um, be very mindful of spaces in your Python scripts. Also be very mindful of tabs. So in my previous video, I talked about the two main core design philosophies of the Python programming language. And one was of efficiency and the other one was of readability. Now, whenever you have something that is of great benefit, usually there's a price to pay. So the price to pay of the efficiency is that you have to be a little bit more mindful of things like spaces and indentation. Now, in other languages, like let's say Java, for example, C++, maybe you'll designate something like a function with curly brackets. Some of you guys love your curly brackets. But here, we don't need curly brackets because there's a redundant thing that's done in other languages where you have the curly bracket open and close indicating that's your block of code, that's your function, for example, or a loop or something like that, right? How do you know where it begins? Open curly bracket. How do you know where it ends? Close curly bracket. But also there's an indentation that's done, right? So the indentation also indicates where it starts and begins. So the problem is, why the redundancy? If both things mean your range or specifying the range of where the code is, where this block of code is for a specific function, for example, then why do we need both of them? Why not use one? So that's what Python does. In Python, we specify certain blocks of code by indentation. Where the indentation begins and where it ends, we know that's the range of code that's relevant to, say, a particular function or a loop or something like that. So because of that, you have to indent with intention. Indent with intention. Don't randomly indent stuff. Don't be indenting and thinking, you know, just cosmetically like, oh, I, I like this code to look this way. No, if you indent something, realize that you are communicating something very specific to the Python interpreter. So if that is not your intention, don't do it. Do not indent anything unless you have a specific reason to do so. And when I say specific reason, I mean a specific reason according to the Python language. So you're doing a loop and you are aware that for the loop, you need to have all of your code indented. That's why you indent, right? If you don't know the specific reason why you're indenting, don't do it. Spaces also do not put random spaces. Spaces can be interpreted as something very specific. You have to understand the interpreter doesn't have intelligence, right? It's very, very specific. Hey guys, if you're still watching this, I know you're enjoying this and that's awesome. But do not use just one source to learn from. Look in the description. I have two of the top books to learn Python from in the description and a great price. Take a look at those books and I recommend you buy them. Also, if you're really serious about learning Python, I recommend you take the course, get certified so you can put that on your resume and get the job. Link in the description for the books and also for the course. Get them all or get whatever works for you. But the bottom line is do not just watch this video. Do not just read a book. Use as many sources as possible to learn. That's the way you really, really become a master. And that's what I want you to become, a master Python programmer. Think of the interpreter as, you know, this robot that you can say, walk that way and then it'll keep walking and there's a wall there and it walks right into the wall. A human says, okay, you want to walk this way, but there's a wall here. They'll turn around and say, hey man, what are you stupid? There's a wall here, buddy. Programming doesn't work that way. If you indent something, you are telling the interpreter that you want something to be done a certain way. You're communicating a certain thing. Your code is going to be interpreted according to the rules of what indentation means, right? So whether you want to, to mean that or not, doesn't matter. Python, the Python interpreter has no intelligence. It's going to do exactly what you tell it to do. So again, be mindful of spaces, be mindful of indentations. Indentation? with intention this is the computer programming university and you're gonna smash that like button because 
you're enjoying this video. And because I'm passionate about your success, I don't just do these videos for fun. I do these videos because I want, I struggled trying to learn certain things based on the materials that were out there. And that was the inspiration for me to do it better. Do it in a way that's fun, that's simple, that you know, everybody can understand. That's what I've been doing since 2006. And I will continue to do so as long as I get those likes and I get those positive comments because I do appreciate the positive feedback. This is not television, this is an interactive medium. So if you guys enjoy the content, support the content, likes, shares, subscribing, smashing that bell. On to the next section. All right, so I'm gonna show you an example of the indentation and the meaning of it. So here I'm gonna do a for loop. So let's create a variable. So let's call it my likes. And let's say my likes equals, and then we'll put everything in brackets and then we'll separate each item by quotes like that. So we can say, for example, in the first section, we can say um, your like, uh, your comments, your subscriptions, and then let's see, you smashing that bell. Smash that bell. So that is our variable. So let's, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna say print. I'm gonna show you something. So let's say print my like, okay? Just like that, let's see what happens. Will it work? Will it drift? So you see what happens. So it says, hello world. And then it prints out your likes, your comments, your subscriptions, you smashing that bell, right? So it's basically printing out that variable that we set up. So what I'm gonna do next is we are going to show you the indentation with intention. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a 4x in my like, or my likes rather, and then we're going to indent our loop, right? So we're gonna indent it. So I'm gonna put here print, and then we're gonna put x in there, and then we're going to say, let's remove this. We don't need this anymore. And let's just say, uh, print, I'm done. Let's run this and see what happens. Okay, so as you can see, we get an error message. It says, uh, file hello world line 16 in module for X in my likes. Name error, name my likes is not defined. Now, it's very important that you get accustomed to these errors and what they mean. Right, so I'm gonna be doing a lot of things like this where I'm gonna show you the errors. It's not that educational if I just do things perfectly all the time, right? And then when you guys do stuff, you're gonna make mistakes and you're gonna see errors for the first time. I want you to see a lot of errors with what I'm doing, right? So you're already familiar with what the errors are and how to address them. So notice what it's saying. It's saying that my, uh, my likes is not defined, right? That's a very common thing. So all we're gonna do is see if that's true. Is it really not defined? So I am saying for X in my likes. So do I have this defined? No, I do not. I call it my like, right? So if I add an S there, now it's defined. My likes is defined as all this stuff, right? And then now when we say for X in, and by, by that when we say for X, for X input, right? For the variable X, I want you to take in something. What's that something? My likes. What's my likes? Well, I already defined it up here. If you're paying attention, you would remember, I told you my likes is this. Well, my likes is this, right? That's what my likes is. And I'm saying for the variable X, I want you to intake this, which is the same thing as this, right? All right, so let's see what happens now. Now we're not gonna get that error anymore. Let me clear this. And now there you go. So it says, hello world, where have you been? And then it says, your likes, your comments, your subscriptions, you smashing that bell, I'm done. Dum, dum, da. So what you will see here, what we did is notice that the way we designated the beginning and ending of our, our for loop, this is called a for loop, right? This is a for loop because it's looping. It's doing the same thing over and over again. And every time it does something, it's taking something from our list up here, right? So we have a list of items, your likes, your comments, right? And for the variable X, I want you to intake from this list. 
First time around, pull down your likes. Second time around, pull down your comments. And what are you doing with it? You're printing it, right? You're going to print X. First iteration of this loop, X is equal to your likes. Second iteration, it is equal to your comments. So every time it prints something differently, because that's how a loop works for X in my likes. So it's going to print that. Print that, print that, print that, until it runs out of items and then it's gonna stop. Now, if I were to add something else into this, remember we said indentation, indentation with intention. So, if I intend to add something to this loop, I will indent it, right? So I'm gonna go and say print, uh, let's say first, well, no, that doesn't make any sense, but let's say uh, print, Actually, we can do something really cool on the fly. I'm going to do something. Let's do something. I just got an idea. So let's say, uh, let's call this iteration. I don't know if I spelled it correctly, but who cares? So there's our, our iteration list. So we can say, I'll just do shorthand because I'm lazy. And that's the beauty of programming. You know, if you're lazy, programming is for you because like a great book that I recommend, link in description, automate the boring stuff. With programming, you can save yourself time. Instead of doing things manually over and over again, you can write a program or script that will automate it for you, right? That's the beauty of it. So how many items do we have? We have, and there's a way to tell that, by the way. There's, a, there's something called uh, length for length. I'm actually going to show you how to use that. So first of all, let's actually talk about using the Python interpreter. I wanted to do that before, but let's do it right now. So if you type in Python in your command prompt, you're going to get the Python interpreter, which is going to tell you the version of Python you have installed, in this case, 2.7.6. Once you're in here, you can do things like, you notice it's saying help. But if you just type in help, you're going to get, it's going to say what? Because the way you type in, the way you get help is you have to do, or any of these options, you have to do help like that. Then it gives you help right so and once you're done with that you can actually quit to go back to the main prompt and now let's get to what i wanted to talk about so i actually want to quit out of here because i want it to be clean so you guys aren't confused by extraneous information here so we want to do the len thing so let's create a list so let's call it list and let's do the brackets let's do the double quotes double quotes so we'll have a few items item one and then we go to item two and then we go to item three why am i so motivated why am i always so happy because i eat well and i exercise I try it anyway so there's our list we have to do the commas in between let's not forget that and then we go to the end of this and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit enter and we're gonna realize that we made a mistake because i didn't say equal so again Pay attention to the errors we get here so you can be familiar with them. I want you to be familiar with the errors that I know you guys are going to get. So look at that error and what it's telling us. We're missing our equal. I didn't define anything. I just said list and I put a bracket like, oh, what does this mean? You have to say list equals and then you have to specify your list. So there's my list. No problems. We're all good. So now what is the length of this list? How many items are in this list? Very easy. We want to print the length. Print the length right <laughs> but oh man but it's not length it's shortened you can just remember in your brain length so you know you can kind of remember what it, what it is but it's actually len print len now if i say print len by itself let's see what happens so it says okay len is a built-in function you see like i said the interpreter it doesn't have any intelligence it's going to do exactly what you said you just randomly said print len it's like okay you want len uh, i don't know what you got with len is a built-in function right you have to be very specific you don't just say print len you say print len and then you specify what you want the len of right i want the len or the length of list right so print len list and now we get three so it actually counts how many items are in the list and prints it out and tells you right there. So that is going to come in handy with your programs. As you get more advanced, there is going to come time where you're going to need to know or be able to determine how many items are in a list. What if you develop a program where a user can enter a bunch of arguments, right? Multiple arguments. The amount of arguments is variable. One person enters one, one person enters two, one person enters ten. Another loser enters a thousand. A thousand arguments? Dude, you have no life. Who's going to sit there and write a thousand arguments? And an argument is basically like a string. So you, like you type in the name of your script, space, and then you can type something else in. Like, for example, print takes an argument. 
Like for example, right here, the argument I gave was len, right? Before we said we we're printing variable names, so we type print, and then we gave an argument, and the, uh, the argument was the variable name. So in the case of a script, you can give an argument of maybe a file name. So maybe your script will process files. So they'll type in the name of your script space, a file name. The file name becomes the argument. Or you could use that string to process otherwise inside of your script. But whatever that value is that they type in that your script reads, that's going to be an argument, right? So that's all there is to it. So moving on. Pa, 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 pa. And now let's talk about variables. What is a variable? Well, I'm glad you asked. A variable, uh, a variable is basically a, a place that you can store something. So let's say, for example, you want to retain a certain string, a number, whatever it is, right? You want to retain a social security number. You want to retain somebody's name, anything like that, any string of characters that you want to retain you can retain it in a variable, it's like a placeholder. Let me show you, it's better to show you rather than to talk about it. So let, let's actually create some variables and use them. Before we do that, a variable can contain letters, numbers, and underscore, but it cannot begin with a number. So let's create a bunch of variables. I'm going to show you legal and illegal variables, just to give an example. So here's how we can create a variable. So I can say, a equals uh, loopy, right? And we can see the result is the name loopy is not defined, okay? So what we need to do is we need to say A equals L-O-O-P-Y, and now we see that works. Remember what we talked about when we did the first Hello World program. We typed in print space hello space world, no quotes. And the interpreter was like, what? You've got to put the quotes. If you're entering a string, you want to put it in quotes, right? So A equals loopy. Now, if I say A, you can see it just automatically prints loopy, right? Now, if I say print A, same thing, right? If I say print and I do A like that, same thing, right? Now, take note of this. So I said A equals loopy. Now I'm going to say A equals likes. Because you know I love likes. I love likes. Likes make me happy. Settle down. Anyway, so A equals likes. Now you see what happens. It says indentation error unexpected indent. So I did A equals likes for, I put an extra space in there. Remember I said about being mindful of spaces. And indentation with intention right so I random I randomly did an indentation basically by adding a space so I try to interpret that as something but it doesn't really follow in this context it's just like what are you doing buddy so let's remove that and see what happens now let's type a you see what happens a second ago I said a is loopy now I say a is likes and it's likes like a equals what Ever the hell I want it to equal like the sugar right so if I say a now indent with intention say it with me no I'm serious because I want you guys to remember this repeat after me indent with intention indent with intention please I'm gonna save you guys from a lot of headache and a lot of hassle by helping you guys to remember that. Always remember that. So what we did here is we put a space before the A, right? So if I remove that space, now it says whatever the hell I want it to equal. If I say print and I say A like that, whatever the hell I want it to equal. Notice the difference. When I just say A, it puts it back in the quotes, like that single quotes. When I say print A in the parentheses, it gives me just literally the string. All right, but that is the way variables work. So I can also say A equals, ah, let's try some illegal variables. So let's say A equals uh, one time for your mind. Your mind. One time for your mind. Okay, 
All right, settle down. <laughs> this is, hey, hey, you guys, I want to remind you something. This is not a comedy video or comedy sketch. You're actually learning right now. You guys are learning Python. Even though you're laughing and you're smiling and we're having a great time, you're actually learning Python, a skill that you can use to get a job, to make a lot of money, and live a lot of your dreams. But you're having a great time doing it, and that is my philosophy. The Python philosophy is readability, right, and efficiency. Well, my philosophy is learning. The first step is to smile because learning should always be fun, and that's why... I do these videos because I want you guys to have a great time learning. I'm passionate about your success and I appreciate your likes. All right, guys. So A equals one time for your mind. Okay, so um, let's see what happens with that. And remember, we always put our string in our uh, quotes. So let's print A. No problem there because that is the value. When I say you have to have letters, it has to begin with letters. You can have numbers and letters, but it's got to begin with letters. We're talking about the variable name, not the contents, not the value. And we're going to get into the different values. You have different data types. Right? We're going to talk about that in uh, integers, float, all that mumbo jumbo. But right now we're talking about the variable name itself. Right now the variable is A. The variable name is A. It's just a letter. That's fine. Now let's see what happens if we try to say 1A equals uh, one time for your mind. One time for your mind. Two time for your grind. Okay, uh, so let's see. 1A one, one equals enter. Syntax error. Oh, no. Okay, settle down. Keep calm. You're watching. So, shout out to CPU Squad. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, notification, shout out. To, actually, shout out to my notification squad. Really appreciate you guys. You guys have smashed that bell, and you guys are right on the video. As soon as I post them up, you guys are on the videos, commenting, liking. Really appreciate it. So, right now, it's saying syntax error, invalid syntax. Doesn't really tell us much, right? So, keep in mind, I want you to remember this. Not always will the error messages be very helpful. Now you know because I taught you what the problem is here. I just told you your variable names have to begin with letters, right? I just began a variable name with a number. That's illegal. Unfortunately, it doesn't tell us that. It just says invalid syntax. But notice it's pointing at the A, right? So at least it's kind of in the range. And you'll notice a lot of times the arrow doesn't point exactly to where you need to be, but it gives you in the range. So if you focus on the A and you're like A, 1A, at least it's pointing at part of the variable name. So if you focus on the variable name and you go through the videos, my videos, the books that I recommend in the description, pick them up, Python the hard way, automate the boring stuff, great books, also my course, review that stuff, right? Review variable names, and in there you quickly find you can't begin it with a number. Oh, that's the mistake. So now we go and we say, um, instead of 1A, we say A1 steak sauce, right? So now I can say print A1. There you go. One time for your mind. So that is it. I think that's what I wanted to cover as far as variables. Next thing we're going to cover is data types. There's various types of data types, and we're about to cover that. You have strings, numbers, tuples, you have lists, and you have dictionary. So those are the five data types. Five guys, burgers and fries. No, five data types, right? Five data types. Strings, numbers, lists, tuples, and all right, guys, that's it, that's it. This is a work in progress. If, do me a favor, if you guys appreciate the style, the way that I've done this, you like the pace, you like the format, you feel like this is really, really great for you to learn, that's the idea, let me know by clicking on the like. If I get 50 likes on this video, 50 likes, let's get the likes up to 50. If I get 50 likes on this video, I'm gonna do a complete video from start to finish about Python. The same way that I've been doing it, I'm going to continue. We're going to go through data types. We're going to go through, I'll actually give you guys some, some, some uh, programs. We'll work on a few programs. You guys are going to have homework assignments, all that good stuff, and we're going to have a great time. So give me 50 likes on this video so I know that there's enough people that want this, 
and like the style because I think this is awesome, but maybe you don't like it. Maybe I'm talking too fast. There's too much goofing around, whatever it is. Let me know whether this works for you. If you guys like it, 50 likes, 50 likes, and we're going to do a full video, which is going to go through Python from beginning to ending. We want this to be the best video for you to learn Python. I want this to be a video where anybody can pick this up. If you, if you, if you have, have so, if you are so interested to learn Python, this will be the video that you can watch and basically will be all you need to get started on your career as a Python programmer. All right. This is the computer programming university. Shout out to my notification squad, CPU squad. All right, guys. And that is it for this video. And uh, until the next one, ciao, vigets, au revoir, salut, uh, dobre noche. All right, guys, this is a computer programming university where learning is always fun, so always remember to smile. All right, guys, I am out. <laughs> <laughs>